Welcome to the Vernon Hills Update. The update offers information about a variety of village services. You'll meet a few of your neighbors and you'll find out about upcoming events. On today's show, we'll find out about this year's Winter Wonderland Holiday Light Show, which opens on Friday, November 28th. We'll also get a quick update on the activities of the Vernon Hills Public Works Department, including winter weather preparations and the Emerald Ash Borer Eradication. We'll touch base with Lake County Board Chair Aaron Lawler, who will update us on the efforts at the county level, including plans to extend Route 53. And we'll check in on some upcoming special events around the village, including the Village Tree and Menorah Lighting planned for Saturday, November 29th at the Vernon Hills Golf Course. Thank you for tuning in to the Vernon Hills Update. Well, we are at the entrance gate to the Winter Wonderland Holiday Light Show. We're with Dave Brown. He's our Public Works Director. And we are going to have the drive through Light Show again at least one more year. That's what we understand. Yeah, we're, uh, we're starting to set up for the Light Show. Uh, this is our 21st year. It started in uh, 1994. It's been a lot of history going through here. And like, just to get people, we're, we're going to remind you right off the bat, and we'll remind you throughout this episode, that uh, the Light Show starts Friday, November 28th. And it goes through Saturday, January 3rd, only closed on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Otherwise, uh, open all the way through. Uh, same price as last time, 5 bucks a car, 10 bucks a car. So we've held the line on pricing. Um, but now let's go back to talk about you've been, wow, since 94. That's a lot of light shows. And that's a lot of people going through it. Do you have any idea how many people have been through it? Yeah, uh, we, we did have a chance to research that, and uh, we're over the one-third of a million vehicles have made it through the light show since 1994. Okay, and I know that we looked at some trends in the last few years. It's been up, 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 over, over 20,000 cars a year for the run every time. So. Yeah, and, and again, last year was uh, near record, so uh, we're anticipating a really good turnout again this year. Well, and what's nice about the light show is it is a drive through one. So if it, sometimes the bad weather is what brings more cars out. If it snows or we get a snowstorm, it's beautiful out here. And you're in your car, so it doesn't really matter. So uh, same route, though, or still entrance off of uh, Lakeview Parkway here. Yeah, really important uh, that the access is not off of Milwaukee Avenue. It is off of Lakeview. It's the same setup as it was in previous year in terms of traffic and moving people in and through the show. And you're, and you're right, uh, although winter brings snow and uh, that part of it, it really adds a lot of uh, extra excitement to the light show. Well, and when we talk about going through the light show, I know you always have a tip that a lot of times weeknights, you can get in the line and queue up along Lakeview Parkway and it's a much shorter wait to get in. Sometimes week weekends when everybody's in town shopping, it gets a little longer. Yeah, uh, depending how much time you have, uh, you know, weekdays are uh, shorter lines. Uh, it becomes more and more popular as people aren't working and they can enjoy the the holiday that much more and they they get in line and enjoy it's a nice family experience and we've always given some tips because you do want to leave time when you go through um, I turn off the headlights and give everybody a little chance don't do the bumper to bumper thing that's when you got a little kid in the car that wants to see everything you got to give it time oh well, it's it, it's the time of season to you know <laughs> slow down this is a time to enjoy family and enjoy uh, the light show and you know so patience is appreciated. Mm -hmm. Also remind everybody again you don't enter at the Cuneo Loyola entrance off of Milwaukee. You have to enter off of Lakeview Parkway. The signs take you all the way around and you e exit off of Milwaukee. At, there's a stoplight there though now then that, that makes it nice so you can get out of there pretty well. Yeah that definitely uh, assists in the uh, exiting after you've enjoyed mm -hmm. the show. Well, let's talk too about you've, you've been uh, seeing this light show for a lot of those years since 94 and we started out it was with John Cuneo and when he and this was his family's ground and now this is with Loyola and we every year we kind of wonder is this the last and so we, we're, we're having that we're, we're up in the air on that at that point so at this point we know we're doing it this year yeah we absolutely uh, know about this year uh, we don't know what the the future holds but I, I have not heard that it wouldn't continue so uh, you know we're, we're preparing for this year and we'll find out what uh, the future holds and as we explain that to people, they probably wonder, why wouldn't you know? You're the public works director. You know everything that's going on there. But it is in the hands of Loyola University who took over Cuneo. It, it absolutely is. Um, you know, there's some business decisions that Loyola is going through. Uh, we, we certainly at the Village enjoy the light show, uh, but we're not necessarily in the driver's seat on that. Okay, very good. So you know what's going on this year starting 
Friday, November 28th is the first night you can come. The, the gates open at 6 p.m. Sometimes people line up a bit before that. They close at 10, open every day, except the 24th and 25th of December. So thank you for that. And you can find out more online. Um, the light show is certainly not the only thing your guys are doing. I know they do have to put in quite a bit of time getting it ready, setting it up, making sure the bulbs all light and everything's untangled. Um, but you've got other things going on here in town. You want to give us a little update from the Public Works Department? Well, we all know that weather's uh, going to change, unfortunately. Uh, so we're buttoning up projects. Uh, it's a time to uh, complete road patching, striping, uh, sidewalk uh, program. Uh, so we're putting the finishing touches on the, those. Uh, and we've dealt with Emerald Ash Borer. That's uh, delayed things. Uh, the good news is we're past the 50-yard line. We started with uh, 3,500 ash trees, and we're well past the halfway point okay. in terms of not only removing them, but replacing them. Oh, really? So, so of those you've removed, you've even gotten replacements in? Because I know one time we talked, you were concerned that even getting replacements, because everybody's hit with the same thing. Yeah, I uh, just very pleased with the village board and their decisions uh, you know the streetscape that we've worked so hard to uh, obtain they didn't want to lose that and we went back and talked to the board as far as the size of the trees and what we could or couldn't afford and they thought it was important to get new trees in the ground as soon as possible mm -hmm. so we can allow them to grow and they add value okay. so you said we're at the halfway point so that means this is going to be an ongoing effort does it does it happen in the winter um, do, do, do trees we, come out in the winter? Or? We try whatever we can. We had <laughs> planned for uh, last winter that we would do a lot of tree removals. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't remove the trees because the snow banks were so high. And if we removed them at that point, we'd only have to go back and then remove the remainder of the, the trees. So that didn't make much sense. So we, uh, we concentrated our efforts on some other things. And come springtime, we were able to go through and, uh, you know, with the contractor's assistance, have trees removed. My staff uh, worked on uh, planting the trees with a contractor's assistance also. So um, we've accomplished the spring planting, the fall planting. Now we're moving towards you know, preparing for winter. So we're getting the plows on. Uh, we have an anti-icing program. We are using you know, beet juice and some of the uh, you know, latest products to uh, reduce the use of salt and its impact. Um, our bins, we have uh, 650 to 700 tons of salt already in our bins, and we've ordered another 500 tons. So uh, we're gearing up for the eventual winter that will come. Yeah, and as we're standing here, we're taping this in October, and it's a beautiful day. Um, do you have any, how do you guys even, do you, do you gauge what the winter is going to be or just hope for the best or plan for the worst or how do you do that? Uh, I, I, I think the goal is to plan for the worst. Uh, last winter was uh, predicted but uh, to the degree that uh, it came and uh, the amount of snow that we had. In addition to snow, it was very, very cold, you know, near record uh, setting in both of those categories. So, you know, tell me when the snow is going to come. Is it during the work day or is it going to require overtime? Is it coming all at once? There's just so many variables. So we just put together a good work plan and uh, just, you know, like you said, plan for the worst. Well, hopefully it isn't the worst, and hopefully, as we before we even get into those winter storms or we think about all that, we will think about the light show. And we do thank your guys for doing all the work they're going to do to get it prepared. Please tell them thank you for that because they do a great job. Um, appreciate all your help from Public Works. Remember, if you want to know more, more about Public Works or projects, Emerald Ash Borer or anything, uh, you can check the website. You can call over to Public Works. You can send Dave an email, and do come out and enjoy the the light show. The guys put in a lot of work, and uh, it's going to be beautiful again. So. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now let's talk about how the work gets done here. We're with Mark Fleischman. He's one of the Public Works guys. You're actually, I understand, a co-designer of the light show. That's correct. Uh, Pete Nielsen and I, we both drive through the route and see where we want to put stuff. And basically, we get an idea in our heads. And then once everything's ready to go out, that's where we put it. OK, so, so you got do you like have to map it out, that kind of a thing? 
So, so you know where to tell everybody to uh, go? La last year we did, we went with that route, but this year it's kind of, we have, we've split into zones, like we've got Candyland, we've got Toyland, so we know roughly where we want them and then that's where we decide to put them okay. and then we put them anywhere in that area. And so as we're, we're taping this interview, I know people aren't watching it till November, but we're in October, so you guys have already had to do that process. So when do you start work on this whole thing? Uh, usually about the second or third week of October. Okay. It's about a month long process of designing and then getting everything out, bulbed and ready. So. Okay. And when we talk about getting everything out, I know we're um, on site at Loyola's uh, Cuneo grounds and we're in front of this big shed. I think it used to be a gymnastics uh, uh, a stadium or something like that. But you've got a lot of things in here that you have to bulb and then you've got trailers on site too that are just jam packed. Yeah, actually this is the, we call it the carriage barn, that's where about 50% of the maintenance gets done for all the displays, so we have mm -hmm. to replace any bur burnt out bulbs, broken sockets, you know, shorted wires, mm -hmm. all that takes place in this building, and then we also have about three big trailers full of cutouts of, you know, famous characters, and then we have, yeah, yeah. and then we've got, you know, a bunch of small displays that we store in there too. So all those things have to come out of the, you've got them all, you know, put away, kind of cataloged, so you know where everything is, and some of them I know, um, when it comes to rebulbing, that is a job in itself. So, is it like are we talking a couple weeks? Or are we talking how, how long to get everything bulbed up and ready? Is it like a month's worth of work? Or? Uh, getting everything bulbed and ready takes about two and a half weeks, but mm -hmm. you also have to have five or six guys working on it at the mm -hmm. same time, especially because most of the displays are pretty heavy. So, you need people to just lift it and get it ready yeah. to be bulbed. Um, yeah, it takes, takes about two and a half weeks. And then while they're doing that, we also have crews running the displays out and then we can set them up as well. So that's why you're looking uh, over a month out just to get everything ready to go for us uh, when we when we open up after Thanksgiving. When you think about the job of bulbing, because I think I have like a couple strings of lights I put up at home and invariably they're, they're a problem. I know you guys put your stuff away better than I do. <laughs> but you know, you've been around for, this has been going on for several years, so I know that sometimes there is some wear and tear, so it is a little bit of work to get everything running again. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, every year it just, going through you got to plug them in make sure everything's running and we try to do our best to keep everything maintained well yeah. it's just some you know it, it's been around for what 20 years or so yeah. so yeah. after a while things are going to start going yeah. bad you just got to expect yeah. it we wouldn't we wouldn't put the cameras on with the sound when you guys are bulbing because i can imagine at some points it's kind of a frustrating <laughs> time to get everything uh, going be. and i know sometimes even putting some of these displays up they are they're you know 10 20 30 feet high or the arches it takes a, a crew and trucks and everything else yeah we we bring out our bucket trucks most of the big displays actually take four or five people to get up. I mean, they're, they're heavy in and of itself, and then you gotta hoist them up with the buckets, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a pretty big okay. show. It's a big show, so yeah. you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna prep for about a month, we're gonna have the show for about a month, and then you probably gotta come out and get it all taken down again, so that's a few more weeks. In between, hopefully we don't have a lot of snow that you have to plow, but that's, then it's all gotta come back down and go, get put away again. Yeah, uh, <laughs> last year actually, in 2013, we, or early 2014, we actually had to walk through about a foot and a half of snow to try and take down some of the displays. And those, the, the stakes get, they're pretty far in the ground and they, uh, sometimes they freeze down they in freeze there. In so there. you're digging, trying to find the stakes, trying to bust them loose and everything, so. Well, it, well, if nothing more, you've told us that whatever we do at our own homes, we shouldn't whine about because it seems a lot easier. So, well, thank you. Thank you to uh, you and to Pete for uh, designing everything. And thank you to the whole crew for all the work they put in to get this ready to go. We appreciate it. And you're thanks welcome. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we are pleased to have Lake County Board Chairman Aaron Lawler with us today. He's a product of Vernon Hills. Um, he stopped by to give us an update on things going on in Lake County. And there's a lot of them. And I'll just tease you with the point. One of them is uh, a Route 53 expansion. So you have to stay and, and listen to this interview for a little while. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Aaron. It's a um, pleasure to be here. And let's start by, you are our Lake County Board Chairman. Mm -hmm. You're also our representative from our district that 
covers Vernon Hills. Is that 18? Yes. Okay. Um, can you give people a little bit of an overview of what the county is? I mean, we've got the village, we've got the township, we've got the county, mm -hmm. we've got the state. The county does a lot, and a lot of it's kind of behind the scenes, too. That's exactly right. It's all those services that I think people notice when they're not working, <laughs> uh, but when they're working well, they, they really don't see a lot of mm -hmm. them. It's our court system, uh, the administration of our elections, the property uh, assessment process, mm -hmm. uh, the health department, uh, and many other administrative functions, as well as uh, public safety and criminal justice, the jail, the sheriff's office, those types of things, which actually drive a lot of our budget. Yeah, And when we talked too, you talked about the health department. I think a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, if, if you haven't been in the position to need it, the health department is amazing because you do have health services mm -hmm. for anybody in Lake County if they need it, regardless of, of the financial situation. Correct. We serve about 50,000 people a year through our primary care service division. So that's everything from checkups for kids to dental service for low-income folks mm -hmm. and uh, particularly low-income veterans. Uh, but the health department's a lot larger than that. We do other things like inspect restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, inspect the quality of our lakes mm -hmm. and water supply. Uh, inspect septic systems uh, in the western part of the county where you don't have a strong sewer network they rely on septic so there's a lot of things that go into the health department it's actually the county's largest department and provides a myriad of services to county residents okay. and you talked you you alluded to the fact as we're, we're taping in october mm -hmm. this is your budget season it's many mm -hmm. it's many uh you know public organizations budget seasons sure. now so as we get into november when people are watching this we're going to learn more about what the budget items are so mm -hmm. hopefully you can come back and give us a, an update of how all that budgeting work does but you said mm -hmm. Uh, jails and things like that really is that the is that the most is that where the most of the dollars have to go to the the criminal justice uh, a lot of it goes to the not just the jail but also your court system so okay. that includes everything from uh, your civil and criminal courts uh, the state's attorney's office the public defender's office those types of things as well uh, the biggest department in the county is the health department with all the functions that we've described mm -hmm. Uh, but the budget is actually uh, looking pretty good this year. Uh, revenues are rebounding to 2007 levels, and so we're seeing a comeback around the county. In our area, uh, the southern area of the county, we're seeing a lot of um, bouncing back in the real estate market. Uh, varies kind of around the county, but that really does drive uh, both revenues and then uh, expenditures. Um, unemployment has gone down significantly. One of the things that I'm really proud of is that unemployment has gone down, but we're the only county in the Chicagoland region where the labor participation rate has gone up. So unemployment down, labor participation up. That means people aren't just giving up, they're actually being put back okay. to work. Okay, so like sometimes people just say, I've given up, I take myself out of the whole mix, but exactly. these are people that are doing what they, they need to be doing. Exactly, so. and then that has you know a, a ripple effect in our local economy. Well, and so you talked about property, value, property values, mm -hmm. employment, all those things. Where does most of the county's budget revenue come from? Is that off of property taxes <coughs> sort of thing? We're very blessed to have a diverse revenue stream. Okay. So one third of our revenues come from property taxes. Okay. The rest come from sales taxes, um, contractual agreements, and other areas. A large portion of, say, the health department's budget, it comes from Medicaid, Medicare reimbursements okay. uh, and other programs. Uh, we've got a lot of grants that we get over there and, and we're very uh, fortunate to receive those. So a lot of times with, with uh, our other property, our, excuse me, with our other taxing districts, mm -hmm. they're more heavily weighted towards property taxes. Okay. We've got a much more diverse revenue stream. Okay. To do all those things, like, like you said, a lot mm -hmm. of them are kind of behind the scenes. We don't mm -hmm. hear about them as much. Mm -hmm. um, and talking about, you, you said the economy, I, I would have to say what you've just told us, the economy is looking brighter around mm -hmm. here, and we have a strong Lake County economy. Um, and other things that drive that, transportation is always a key when we talk yep. about Lake County <coughs> economics and things like that. And I understand that we can, t the last time you were here, you said we're moving forward with Route mm -hmm. 53, which, which is our north-south mm -hmm. corridor. How is that coming along? It's coming along really well. And the reason it's working well is we've brought everybody to the table. Our municipal leaders like Roger Byrne, uh, the environmental community, 
our uh, economic development folks and our private sector people. Everybody's at one table working out a consensus that everybody can live with. This roadway would go through some of the most sensitive uh, wetlands mm -hmm. and areas in Lake County. So we have to build a new type of road. It involves a, a creative way of thinking uh, and also a creative way of financing. This project is a, a 2.5 billion dollar initiative that would be a toll road. So that's really the basis for the revenue. That generates about 10 to 10 percent of the revenue needed for the project. Uh, the rest we're working at local financing options, some creative revenue streams that we'll be uh, working on through the end of this year, and then providing the local municipal leaders recommendation to the tollway board in the beginning of next year. Okay. But no tollway pays for itself except the tri-state. And so it's important for our residents to know that this is a regional road with a substantial regional benefit and it needs to be paid for with regional funds. Okay, So all those pieces, of the, you're, you're, you're in the beginning, mm -hmm. it looks like it's going, mm -hmm. but all these people still have to work out the you know consensus building and things like that. So there isn't, there isn't a plan yet. Mm -hmm. But as it goes through all these different um, organizations and you do build that mm -hmm. consensus and figure out the, the best recommendation, um, what will that communication process look like? I mean, will, will it be up to the toll road people to tell mm -hmm. us how to do this? Or are they the ones that are going to tell us how it's going to look or anything? Or is that going to come out of the county or where? Well, we've got a, a draft set of recommendations, okay. but we're really trying to vet the numbers, make sure they're accurate, and also engage our state legislators because a lot of what we're uh, thinking about involves changes to state legislation. Uh, oh. th so we'll need them at the table. Um, really though, the Tollway Board is critical in communicating this because uh, one of the biggest things uh, that we're looking at is the equity of tolling uh, on the Lake County portion of I-94. And I realize this is a, an uncomfortable thing to talk about, but when you look at the numbers, uh, the average per mile toll in the Lake County portion of 94 is about six cents a mile. Uh, System-wide, it's at 13 cents. Okay. And so uh, what we want to do is both address that equity issue as well as some of the long-term strategic goals of both the county and the tollway. Mm -hmm. We've had a huge issue uh, with truck diversion in Lake County, truck diversion onto 41 yeah. um, over the years. Mm -hmm. It's not only uh, a traffic problem, it's a huge safety problem where people will come down 41, they'll exit onto Grand Avenue going west, and then they'll get onto I-94 for free and mm -hmm. not have a toll until they hit the O'Hare toll. That's the type of thing that we're, we're trying to work with uh, both to generate revenue uh, for the project, but also address some of these major safety issues. Well, and that is that Route 41, that, that just gets packed with the semis, mm -hmm. and they're moving. So, yeah, and it's not yeah. built for that. Yeah. So, that's, so you have mul every question, every task mm -hmm. has multiple tasks behind it then to get it to where you need to be. It sure does, mm -hmm. and we have to have a, a big vision for this project. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's about the... Uh, 53 Northern Extension, but it's also about what transportation looks like in our mm -hmm. county. We want to look at ways that we can also generate revenue for the 41 corridor plan. Uh, again, a huge safety issue. Mm -hmm. It's a roadway that was built uh, way back <laughs> when with engineering principles that would never be conceived mm -hmm. of now. And so we want to also have an eye towards that. Okay. When you put it all together, uh, the county is uh, very strongly committed to investing in our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We're investing half a billion dollars in our county roads and actually some of that is going to state roads because I think people don't understand if they're on a state right. road or exactly. a county road yeah. or a local road. All they know is that they're in traffic. Yeah. <laughs> and so we've been looking at that holistically and saying mm -hmm. what projects could we invest in that will have the biggest bang for our buck. Mm -hmm. I think investing in infrastructure is one of the most important things that the county board mm -hmm. can do to foster economic development. And so we've really been committed to this. I think one of the differences between our five-year plan and say the state's year five-year plan is we have a committed funding source for each year of that plan. Mm -hmm. So you can take it to the bank. Mm -hmm. Other plans might be funded for one year uh, but, but not the second, yeah, third, and fourth continue, year. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good to know that planning is going into place, that holistic approach. I like to hear that everybody's at the table, including the environmental groups, mm -hmm. because if you're new to the area, 53 has been talked about 
I, it seems like for forever. Mm -hmm. um, and it has been that the issues with traffic and the gridlock. And I know that you, as a county board president, you, you hear, you know, I, I'm concerned about my company getting my workers where they need to go. So it does have that huge economic impact if we can get the roads moving a little bit. So. It's a huge issue for our employers uh, and not just the um, asphalt and pavement mm -hmm. uh, side of things. We're also very committed to the public transit side of, of things. Oh, good. And we've made substantial investments into what are known as shuttle bug programs that connect our metro stations with our large employment centers. Uh, a lot of that's being done through the Lake Cook TMA that uh, works on getting workers from those metro stations mm -hmm. to employers along the Lake uh, Cook Road mm -hmm. corridor. Uh, but we've expanded that out into other areas. Abbott is a great example. Uh, Lake County has more reverse commuters than any other county in the region. So that means people are still choosing to live in Chicago, but work in Lake County. Okay. That is interesting, and it does make a, it makes you have to look at the whole transportation package mm -hmm. in a new way. So Absolutely. And, and as an employer, too, if, they, if somebody mm -hmm. has questions for you, if they're an employer and they want to learn more about transportation options, you're you're yeah. you're you're there. For that. Absolutely, so, exactly. contact my office. Well, that's that's a really exciting time. We're going to have to keep track of that. Mm -hmm. um, come back and visit us about that. And you have also you've got some other projects that to me they're probably not as daunting, but mm -hmm. yet have a very big impact. One of those you've talked about work that's been going on in your public works department. Yep, we have a, a large public works department that serves uh, different communities in different ways. Some we only provide water. Some only sewer and some both. Here in Vernon Hills, I think it's one of the county services that probably most directly impacts our okay. residents. Um, and so uh, when you put it all together, 34% of our customers countywide live here in Vernon Hills. Okay. And we really feel strongly really? about, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, we really feel strongly about making the necessary investments in order to make sure that we have a high quality high level of service. Mm -hmm. And one of those things uh, is the implementation of automatic meter readers, mm -hmm. uh, which I've heard a lot about here in town. People are kind of asking, why is this all happening and, mm -hmm. and what's the reason behind it? Uh, every 15 or 20 years, we need to re replace our meters. The equipment becomes obsolete. What we've done now is uh, implemented a system where it's all automated. We no longer need to employ a workforce or contract for services to do that function of mm -hmm. manual meter reading. Where they walk at, through your yards exactly. and went, yeah, exactly, and try to exactly. figure out through the snow bank where the meter was, yeah. Exactly, so it's all going to be read um, in an automated fashion. Okay. The benefit, the real benefit for our residents is a more efficient and effective um, reading of usage. Mm -hmm. So if there is a leak in your house, um, that's going to get detected much quicker than it would have been under the manual okay. system. And then we can make the necessary repairs uh, in order to get you on mm -hmm. uh, the right billing um, for the right usage. Well, so I know a lot of us have already changed out the meters. And mm -hmm. literally, uh, as the card that you got in the mail says, it yep. takes about 30 minutes. It's exactly. fairly, and, and the person was there on time and courteous, and it was an easy process. I will tell you that. Yep. Um, so do, if people haven't done that yet, mm -hmm. do they, are, are they continuing to get rec, uh, information or are you going to have to start calling people? Because as with all things, you know, if you've got a house that nobody's living in it or something sure. like that. Sure. We're, we're on the tail end of that, so okay. I think they'll be getting more and more aggressive <laughs> okay. if they don't uh, get okay. uh, an appointment scheduled. Okay. But I had the same experience at my house. They were just wonderful. It was uh, easy. They were on yeah. time. They actually were done quicker than they yeah. said they were yeah. going to be. Uh, but the other piece of it is the actual billing side. And I want to make sure that we are providing the highest level of customer service through our public works department. One of the things that I've really wanted them to get more aggressive about is um, automated billing. So mm -hmm. you can sign up, have your bill uh, okay. directly debited from your checking account. Uh, they have that information on our uh, website, lakecountyil.gov. Okay. If you go to the public works department, uh, you can, you so you can, can sign that. up for that now? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And then, the, then the thing is you don't have to mail out to everybody, mm -hmm. so that saves the, the county money, mm -hmm. which saves us money. Exactly. And then in turn, I don't have to turn around and mail back to you. So. Yeah. Okay. The more efficient we can make our operation, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. it's going to have an impact on our customers on what they're mm -hmm. paying. 
What people might not understand is our public works department is an enterprise fund. It's money in, money out. It runs more like a business than any other department in county government uh, because there is no tax subsidy to that department. Okay. So it has to run like that. Exactly. Okay. So, well, and it's, it's convenience too. I think more people are used to online banking and all these mm -hmm. things, so it's not it's not such a leap. So we can go onto the website and sign up for that. Absolutely. Okay. And I know one more thing you wanted to talk about is, and it kind of gets back to the role of the county, where you are, you know, kind of the, an overarching uh, organization, but shared services, where mm -hmm. you're trying to do more efficiencies and things like that. And I like to hear about that with any organization. So, Absolutely. It's really been something that's marked uh, my chairmanship mm -hmm. over the past two years. You know, as uh, much as I hate to admit it, I don't have a lot of hard power. I mm -hmm. can't get anything done unless I get 10 other of my colleagues mm -hmm. to vote with me on it. Mm -hmm. But I sure do have a lot of soft power to convene the right people mm -hmm. around the table and have a discussion about how we can make things more efficient mm -hmm. uh, in our operations uh, in county government as well as other governments. One of the big examples of that that we're working on is consolidated 911 dispatch. It's yeah. something we've already done here in Vernon Hills, mm -hmm. where Libertyville and Vernon Hills band together mm -hmm. and consolidated their dispatch center. When you add it all up, we have 24 public safety answering points around the county. It's 24 dispatch centers. Uh, and I don't know what the best model is yet. We're getting everybody together and trying to build partnerships to have a really thorough discussion uh, but the, when you add all of the operating budgets of all of these centers, it's $33 million a year. And we did a study that showed if we went to a more consolidated model, we could save up to $10 million, mm -hmm. one-third of what we're already spending. I think that would have a substantial uh, benefit for taxpayers across the county. Mm -hmm. So that's something you're just starting discussions about. And you exactly. said our own our own people from here in Vernon Hills who are experts at our 911 are involved as well. Yeah, Chief Fleischhauer has been wonderful to deal with. Uh, this, is, this is a complicated issue, not only because you have all these different systems that have different replacement schedules, but you also have uh, well-established organizations where people instantly worry about, you know, what's going to happen to me or this right. position or that mm -hmm. position. So we just have to address those, those issues head on. It's something that Chief Fleischhauer has already been a mm -hmm. part of, and so we really right. wanted to bring an expert that has lived through this into the fold. Right. Here in Vernon Hills, it, it, and we brought Countryside Fire. They're all yep. together, and, and that went very you know, smoothly. Mm -hmm. I know that in some of the other towns I've heard, there, you know, the, the, township, the, the, the people of the town get mm -hmm. nervous. You can't take away our 911. We won't get the service we need. So yeah. there is that. There's that the, the pull of the heart, too, is what yeah. I want to make sure we're safe and good. So I know this is a complicated issue that you will look at all the sides of it. So. And that's critical because it's not just a dollar and cents issue. Mm -hmm. It's also a quality of service right. issue. We have communities like uh, Gray's Lake where the fire department, every call that they take has been forwarded. So somebody is literally calling in and saying that they have some type of emergency and they're being transferred. Oh. By moving to a more consolidated model, we're going to eliminate those types right. of transfers and hopefully cut down on our response time. All right. Well, and when you think of it too, as you said, it, new systems, it's it, to, to turn over and get the newest system mm -hmm. and be the most responsive, that, that's, a, that's an investment in infrastructure and personnel who knows how to operate all mm -hmm. that. So if it's been good for us, we've been on the cutting edge of everything, yep. and, but uh, some others, maybe we can help them along. So yeah. that's an interesting, that shared service uh, concept is, is good for everybody. And I know it isn't just in 911 where you're just looking at it. Yep. Um, you've got some other things that you're kind of working with uh, other groups and trying to get by. Power. Sure, we're working a lot around joint procurement. One thing that we've done uh, for a long time with the village of Vernon Hills and the state of Illinois is to band together around salt contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can provide that economy of scale, we get a much better unit cost. We're also looking at the types of functions that we may not perform on a too regular basis, like elevator inspections. You know, everybody goes in the elevators mm -hmm. and they see yeah. that little certificate about that it needs to be inspected every year. Um, but a lot of communities don't have a lot of elevators. And so what we did was created a countywide service where everybody can hop onto that contract, create that economy of scale, um, and it, it, it sure does work well. Another thing that we're working on is structuring all of our bids so that a local unit of government can 
jump onto that procurement process. So if we're bidding out office supplies or some other uh, commonly uh, purchased mm -hmm. item, uh, units of government can now jump onto the county's bid okay. and get that unit cost. Okay. Um, the other side of that is uh, really focusing on um, investing in local business. We, okay. you know, we have a large budget, it's a large operation, and we want to make sure that we're reinvesting as much of that money back into the local economy as possible. And so we're focused like a laser on measuring how okay. successful we are on local hiring and local procurement. It's called Buy Local, Work Local. Uh, and okay. it's a big program at the county. Now, for if somebody has something that they think they could get on your procurement schedule mm -hmm. as a possible vendor, do they have to go through any kind of certification process, or do they just let you know they exist, or what happens? So what they can do is sign up on our website, and they, they basically go through all of the different things that we okay. have procurement needs for, okay. and they sign up for those, and then they get automatic alerts when we have a need, okay. um, either an RFP, a bid, um, that type of thing and then they'll get information so that they can participate in that process. Okay, that's another good thing to go online. So we need to go online and sign up for our uh, uh, electric uh, bill to go to go paperless, a water, uh, yeah. water bill to go paperless, <laughs> and we need to make sure that we've got our businesses signed up so that yeah. they can get on the schedule with you. Yeah. So. And a lot of this information I put into my, my mm -hmm. e-newsletter, which I have uh, a couple thousand folks in my district that subscribe to. Okay. I get really rave reviews. Sometimes people say, do I really need to get another yeah email, uh, but it is a great opportunity, a great one-stop shop when we have road construction alerts, okay. severe weather alerts, uh, and this type of information that we've talked about today. Mm -hmm. So I'd encourage people to go to my website, sign okay. up for my e-newsletter. And free. Free, uh, yes. So it's all good. There's nothing, no, no, no strings attached yeah. to that. So there is so much information, and there's a lot of information on the county website as well. Um, so between your email sign up and the county website and the calls that people can make, um, I think you've given us a really uh, a, a lot of information here. <laughs> and now we know we want to talk to you again because we'll come back and talk about how 53 is going in the budget yeah. process and everything as we move forward. So yep. thank you for taking the time. I know it's busy over at the county, so yeah. I appreciate it. And if you want to know more, remember, just get a hold of Aaron, get a hold of Aaron's office. Yeah. Uh, they'll take care of you. So thanks very much. Hey, thank you. Well, there's always a lot going on over the holidays and really all the time in Vernon Hills. We've come over to talk to Lisa Fishbeck, who's kind of an expert on a lot of the special events. And, you know, why don't we talk just a few of the housekeeping tips that go along with the light show. I know that you a lot of times get calls from people who want to take big vehicles through the light show. And you know there's some tight corners in there. Right. There are a couple tight corners in the, in the light show. So um, small buses are about the only thing that can go through other than your your family cars. Anything longer than 22 feet will not make it around some of the hairpin turns. So that's that's the reason why I know sometimes you get people like, why can't I bring my entire, you know, high school right. team through or whatever. So. Right. The smaller buses are the only thing that'll fit through there. So. Well, and as, as she, we said before, she knows everything about the light show. So if you do have questions, you can always give her a call. Um, and as far as the light show, uh, we uh, Monday through Thursday, $5? Is that the same right. price for the vehicle? The light show will open on the 28th of November, and it will run until the 3rd of January. It's open seven days a week, with the exception of Christmas and Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Uh, it runs from 6 to 10 p.m., and on Monday through Thursday, it's $5. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's 10
So. And when you queue up, uh, people sometimes get confused, but you do queue up along Lakeview Parkway just off Route 60. Right. The entrance is on Lakeview Parkway, um, north of Route 60. It is not on Milwaukee Avenue. That's the exit. So if you get confused, just follow the signs. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of signs on Route 60 that will get you to where you need to go. Okay. And when people do queue up, there, you, if, if you're coming through the neighborhoods, uh, the public work has done a great job of trying to rope things off so neighbors can get where they need to go. And right. Right. There's cones out. You can't miss it. Okay. So a lot of cones. Yeah, and on some days that line goes back pretty far, but it does go through quickly. Right. For the past couple of years, we've been doing outstanding, and uh, it gets to the point where the cars are queued up against uh, along Center Drive, uh, and the police department has to come out because otherwise the traffic would go all the way out to Milwaukee Avenue. Because yeah. you do get thousands of people. Oh, there's uh, on the average at a minimum of 20,000 cars that go through the uh, light show annually. That's pretty interesting. Another point that goes along along with the light show is you guys have done uh, license plates. Now that's a and that's something uh, that somebody can get that as, as kind of a collector's item too. This year. Right. The license plates, um, they are on order um, and we hope to have them soon. Mm -hmm. uh, they are $35 for uh, a set of plates and they are your season pass to get through the light show all you want. Some people go through once or twice and other families go through 30, 40 times a year. <laughs> yeah. So the light show has this popular popularity. Yeah. And how long do you keep those plates on your The plates are good from the 3rd of November until the 3rd of January, uh, 60 days while the event is on, and then it's uh, they have to come back off your vehicles at the end of the, the event. Okay, so usually people just take their other plates off, throw them in the back seat, throw them in the trunk, and put these on for a little bit, and then they go up in your garage or wherever, because this could be a real collector item. Oh, I have I have many license plates <laughs> on my garage, or my in my garage as well. So, so if somebody wants that, they come to see you then? Right, the application is available online or it is also available at their counters here at the Village Hall. Mm -hmm. um, you, we just need your current vehicle registration. It has to, it ha your vehicle registration has to be dated uh, January of 2015 or I guess later. Okay. So um, it must go through the end of the event. Okay. So January of 2015 is when you're, it's got to be. you got to be good for that. Got to be good for at least that. Okay. So, so you so. bring that with you and then and then a check or money order? A check or a money order and we mail that down to the state and then the license plates are mailed directly from the state to you at your residence. Okay. And then once you receive them you can, you have your choice of either putting them on your car or a lot of people will just carry them in the car and then oh. flag them as they go through okay. the light show. Uh, otherwise it's a great novelty to have on your car and it's, it's a conversation piece yeah it is a conversation piece they're usually pretty cute so um, let's talk about some other things coming up we have the village tree and menorah lighting again this year I hope right the village tree and menorah lighting is on the uh, November 29th Saturday over at the golf course uh, it will be at 430 so bring your friends your family your neighbors out enjoy a little bit of uh, some cookies and hot chocolate and cider uh, I believe Santa Claus will be showing up oh, I hope so. uh, countryside <laughs> fire is always very very faithful about making sure that they get him to <laughs> us um, and the uh, the mayor and the Queens will turn on the holiday tree with Santa Claus mm -hmm. and uh, the menorah will be light lighted mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, a very quick evening but it's kind of fun to get out and meet your neighbors yeah well and it's free there's it's all the uh, refreshments and everything oh, it's yes. just courtesy of everything. oh yes it's just a compliment mm -hmm. it's complimentary kind of just to start to the holiday season well and as we talk about the holidays this is one of the times when a lot of organizations organizations um, collect food, uh, you know, non-perishable food items. You've got people thinking about doing that. I know we do collections around through the village as well. Right. We have at the police department at Public Works and here at the Village Hall, we have a container for food collection, um, especially during the holidays for a lot of our families that are in need. Um, we collect the food for the Vernon Township uh, um, pantry mm -hmm. and uh, we will also coordinate if you want to have um, a food collection in your office or something uh, and don't know how to get it to where it needs to go give me a call I can coordinate a pickup for you uh, we will get it to the township office and it'll be distributed amongst mm -hmm. the families in need well and sometimes that's the thing everybody brings something and then you we you don't have a way to get it where it has right. to go in public works and you guys can help do that so. right either the township office will pick it up for you or we'll get the or we'll get public works to pick it 
it up for you if it's quite a bit. And we highly encourage people to drop off uh, food items here at the Village Hall. Um, if anyone is interested in adopting a family of anything like that, please contact your township office. I mean, Libertyville Township or Vernon Township, they always have families in need and they're always collecting items for the families, um, not just food items, but they do an outstanding Christmas and holiday program. Well, and that's the other thing to remember. We're talking about the holidays now, so everything's on our mind about that. But this is a need that goes on year-round, and right. you, you always have your collection bins here, and the townships are always working with everybody. Yeah, right, right. We are, we, our collection bins are here 24-7, uh, 365, so we will uh, take anything or, or pick it up if we, need, if we need to. Well, you're a great resource to, to know that, so if you, if you do need to do something or you need to figure out how to do it, talk to Lisa. She can help you get organized. And help you get that done so we can help if somebody needs a hand those of us who can will and if we need the help the township is available to help us as well so well thank you for your time here today have a great holiday we'll watch for you at the tree lighting and thanks for for all the info info today oh, anytime Well, that wraps up this edition of the Vernon Hills Update. If you have comments or suggestions, please contact Mike Storto at 847-918-3560 or email Mike S at vhills.org. Thank you for tuning in to the Vernon Hills Update.